Morning, everybody, and welcome to our Talking Cafe today. It's uh, Wednesday, the 3rd of March, um, and a very exciting day. I know you're all tuning in. We have Bryony, Bake Off um, star. Morning, Bryony. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> We're so excited to have you on here this morning. I don't know how many people we've got um, on here at the moment, but, um, but yeah, really excited to have you on here today. Um, as we all know, back in 2018, um, you reached the semi-finals, and very exciting time since. I'm sure and things have probably just taken off um, and you did win the Christmas special in uh, 2019 so um, so yeah I'm sure things have not been quiet since in your household <laughs> <laughs> no absolutely not no it's all been a bit bonkers <laughs> oh gosh um, so do we have Nora joining us today to do some cooking what are we yes uh, we do we I'm going to call her there? down when I start the baking because she gets bored of hearing me talk about myself <laughs> yeah. Well, tell us a little bit about what's been going on then since, uh, you know, all of this took off, which I can't even believe it was 2018, 2019 now. It's like I know. 2021. I, and where, you know. <laughs> I know. Where's the time gone? Well, to, you know, we spent 18 months in a pandemic. But apart from that. Um, yeah. So, yes, yeah, so I, I was on Bake Off in 2018. And um, I was a stay-at-home mum at the time. I was a teacher before. I taught French and Spanish at a boys' school in Bristol. Um, and, uh, yeah, and then Bake Off happened. And I, I never really expected anything to come of it. But since then, I just all these wonderful opportunities have presented themselves. So I work on uh, a programme on Channel 4 now, Food Unwrap, where I present, which is wonderful. Um, which is a really fun show where we delve into sort of the mysteries behind food. Um, and it's just, just really fun, but really, really interesting as well. Um, and uh, yeah, and I've been working with lots of charities, lots of stuff on Instagram, um, been on Loose Women. <laughs> um, you know, I, I'm going to be on you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've been on Loose Women Ooh. and Blue Peter, which was very exciting um two very different shows obviously <laughs> mm, um, yeah <laughs> and uh I got gunged on Saturday morning children's tv which was kind of one of those bucket list moments uh which is really good <laughs> if you youtube it it's quite funny if you go yeah pop it Bryony <laughs> Bryony Williams uh Saturday morning mashup gunging uh <laughs> that's a bit of a laugh and um and yeah it's just all been quite bad I've got Lots of stuff in the pipeline of, of things coming up. Um, I'm going to be on Ainsley Harriet's um, Food We Love in April. And hopefully next week, uh, so a week Saturday, my episode of Celebrity Mastermind will be on. Oh, hang on, the doorbell's gone. The dog's going mental. <laughs> well, this sort of thing that happens on a normal daily routine when you're all trying to work from home. <laughs> Oh, so funny. You um, couldn't write it. No? Sorry. Two seconds. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> no, it's not. It's uh, obviously, no, I'm not what I know of. Oh. Yeah, it's not, I'm not that I know of, no. Yeah, but that was Max. No, it's not, no. no. Sorry. Sorry, everyone. Sorry. Amazon man. <laughs> Um, Amazon just turns up all the time, doesn't it? I think since okay. we've all been like, in lockdown, the amount of Amazon orders we've all had through just to cheer ourselves up or get immediate essentials. <laughs> I know. I do apologise, everyone. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so um, yeah, I'm on Celebrity Mastermind in a couple of weeks. Film that back Ooh. in November, which was really good fun. Um, and what's, what is your uh, chosen subject for that? My chosen subject, <laughs> wait for it, Julie, it's very highbrow. Um, it's boy bands of the 90s and noughties. Oh, it's going to be a bit of Backstreet Boys and stuff going oh, yeah. on in there. Then. <laughs> take that, yeah. Boy zone, take that. So, um, yeah, that was that was absolutely brilliant. That was really, really good fun. Um, so, yeah, I'm looking forward to that, that one coming out. So, yeah, a lot going on, but I'm also still... Um, at home mum to Nora so she is five I'll call her down in a second and yeah so obviously like a lot of parents we've been homeschooling since January she's only in reception so bless her she only had a term of school and then Aww. then lockdown three happened mm -hmm. so um Aww. and she's very excited to be going back to school uh, next mm. week as am I mm. <laughs> um 
So, yes, yeah, child care yeah. is is a nightmare, isn't it? Especially if you're called to do stuff or you need to be online or you know do Zoom calls. It's it's just very difficult, isn't it, to have them in the background and try and keep yeah. them occupied. Exactly, and it's you know it's not fair on them. You know she wants to be in school with her friends, yeah. learning mm-hmm. and, and yeah. having fun, and you know she's stuck at home. And there's, it's not like we can go to the zoo or no, you know, no, like you can take time out mm, and go somewhere yeah, nice. You know, it's, it's not like a holiday. No, exactly. So it's you know, and it can't go and see her friends or anything like that. So I think that's going to be going to be great for her. She's very excited about that. Um, but we have been doing weekly live bake alongs on my Instagram, which has been really fun. We've had some amazing guests. We had Andy Day from CBBS, mm. um, and we had Dr. Range last week. Um, and basically, they just come along and we do a kid friendly recipe, nice and simple, that people can bake along to, just to give parents a bit of a bit of respite in the week from homeschooling. Uh, and that's been that's been great. Loads of people have been been involved. So. Yeah, it's been really good. So I'll call Nora down, then we can start yeah. baking. Brilliant. Gonna bake yeah. Cookies. So just one moment. Hey. <laughs> Nora, can you come down now? This is where it it all goes wrong with children on TV. I'm sure. <laughs> well, yeah, what they say never work with children or animals. No, they need the toilet or something. You know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We had that in the middle. We had that in the middle of a live the other day. Like, Mummy, I need the toilet. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, this is this is a slightly adapted one of the rest from one of the recipes I did the other week with um, Joe Sith Elliot, who's one of the pirates on Swashbuckle, <laughs> which anyone who's got young kids will know exactly yeah. what that is. Um, and yeah, hello, darling. You're tired, I know, right? Come and say oh. hi to Julie, everyone. Hello, Nora. Hi. So hello. this is my daughter, Nora. Now, Nora is a very, very good baker. She bakes with me a lot, don't you? So today we're going to make some chocolate chip cookies. Now oh, the reason wow. Nora's got her earmuffs on, hang on, I'll turn it, turn it slightly. The reason Nora's got her earmuffs on is because she doesn't like the sound of the electric whisk. Oh. <laughs> so you put your earmuffs on when mommy does that bit, don't you? Oh, you're tired. <laughs> so Nora's been baking since she was about two, haven't you? Yeah. You nearly said one. <laughs> and do you like baking? You're going to eat one of my chocolate chips. There you go. She's already in with the chocolate chips. Oh. <laughs> right. Can't so wait for the Easter. You get all the Easter Easter eggs out and things. You'll be decorating everything with uh, mini eggs. Oh, yeah. Let's Do you know see. what? These would work really well with mini eggs in. That's such a good idea, Julie. See, she's on the ball. Mm, yeah. This is Cheetah. Mini eggs. She's, she's going to be helping as well. Yeah. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to make some chocolate chips. You're just going to cuddle her, all right. We're just going to um, we're going to make some chocolate chip cookies, but if if there's any chocolate chips left, um, <laughs> but we're going to also add in a bit of biscoff and chocolate spread in there uh, because it adds some extra delicious mm. flavour. The first thing we're going to do is we've got some soft brown sugar, light brown I sugar. Asleep. You fell asleep. <laughs> Um, some soft brown light sugar and um, some butter, a little bit of butter. This recipe is on my um, Instagram, by the way, if anyone would like to do this one at home. And now I'm going to add some Biscoff spread and some Nutella to the mix. Nora's just going to carry on eating chocolate chips. Yeah. <laughs> she's not got her, she's not got her finger in the uh, Nutella spread, I suppose. Sort give it, of give it a second, Julie. It'll happen in a minute, I'm sure. <laughs> um, so, and now I'm going to get my. So, oh, I've got those. So, I've got those in there. Sugar, butter, biscoff spread, and Nutella. I'm just going to give it a quick whisk. Only, a, only, a, only thirty seconds. <laughs> Yeah, we're just going to bake it, yeah. Okay? So we're going to just whisk it up just for a few seconds until it's going all right, thank you. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, until it's um, 
creamed ever so slightly. And then once we've done that, we're going to add a tablespoon of milk. I'm trying to get the camera right here. It's back to front for me. So I'm I know it is for me. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> it's really confusing. It is. And we're doing one egg. You're going to come and help me put this in? <laughs> so one She's egg. Back. So can you... She's back. Can you pop that in for mummy, please? What's just an egg, darling? Chocolate. Another chocolate chip. Okay. Right, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> right, so we're going to pop an egg in as well, and then we're going to give it another quick whisk. This is really, really simple recipe. And it's one that you can adapt. So if your kids aren't that keen on chocolate chips, I don't know any children who aren't no. that keen on chocolate chips, but <laughs> you love chocolate chips. <laughs> you can take them out. You could add white chocolate chips. You could add little pieces of fudge. You could add blueberries, you know, if you want to put some fruit in there. Yeah, you would, yeah. If there was chocolate chips in a bowl, she'd eat them all, that's for sure. Yeah. Right, so we're just going to give this another one. Just a few seconds. So then you've got a slightly sloppier mixture. And then we're going to add the flour. Are you going to come and help me? She's given it. She's given up already. Um, so I'm going to add my plain flour and I'm going to also add half a teaspoon of bicarb and she's just basically going to come back to steal chocolate chips and then run away yeah. and then half a teaspoon of baking powder and I'm just going to fold that in oh Fold that in until we've got a lovely cookie dough texture. Um, so Nora and I have recently uh, released a uh, baking with kids course. That, uh, <laughs> that um, is out now and you can actually get a free. Bye bye. You can actually get a free um, pizza making lesson. Um, and I think you're very kindly going to share that link. Yeah, that's um, the Bryony, Bryony Teaches link, isn't it? That's the one, yeah. So if you go on bryonyteaches.co.uk and follow the link to the free pizza um, lesson, free pizza making lesson. Yeah. Um, and then if you like that, you can go on go on to get the whole course. Um, but it was really, it's really good because, I mean, I think <laughs> Nora, bless her, she's a bit baked out. We do, um, you know... It happens a lot, so she does sometimes just get a bit like, I don't want to bake anymore. Yeah, yeah. But this is this, just adding the chocolate chips. Um, so this this course is great for anyone who really wants to, you know, start baking with their kids if they don't already. Um, it's full of lots of really easy recipes, nothing too crazy, um, just so that you can enjoy baking at home with your children, um, which is what I, we I do. just think because... <laughs> Because, um, you know, more parents work nowadays, I just don't think it's the sort of thing that a lot of mums get time to do. I mean, I know when I, you know, when my kids were small, my, my mum used to do a lot of the cooking with my kids when, when she looked after them for a couple of days a week. You know, I'd arrive and everything would already be set up ready for the, you know, the morning baking or she'd make their own Play-Doh and they'd be playing with that. But, you know, for me, I mean, I did as well, but for a lot of mums that you know they're both working you know both parents are working full-time we just don't really get the chance i mean yeah, i suppose exactly. in, in, in lockdown people being furloughed you know we've had more time to do stuff like that haven't we and i'm i'm sure um you know the kids have really appreciated having the, the parents there but um we know it's not going to last forever <laughs> yeah that's that's why i think you know that's why i wanted to release this course because it's you know it's something that parents think oh I don't have the time or, or it's going to be too stressful or, or you know, mm. whereas with, with the course, you know, you've got everything you need, all the information you need, lots of tips and tricks on how to make it really engaging for the kids, but also mm. fun for the adults. You know, mm. it's all well and good having a, a course that's great for the kids, but you want the adults to enjoy it as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. So because I, and I do think that something that Bake Off has done is that it's made baking really popular again, which is great. Mm. Mm. Um, yeah, definitely. You know, it's 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 trendy again mm. um whereas i think that you know when i was growing up baking definitely wasn't trendy whereas now no. you know a lot of a lot of teenagers really get into the to the baking scene mm. Mm. um 
Right, so I'm just going to go and get my ice cream scoop. So I've got a little little hack. Oh. Here. Sounds like a good tip to save getting all your hands and uh, everything else filthy using an ice cream scoop. So if you can get an ice cream scoop like this one with the, mm. the um, thingy on, basically this is perfect if you're baking, if you if you like to bake regularly, because you can mm. use this for um, cookies, biscuits, cupcakes, pancakes. It basically means if you scoop out your your cookie dough, and then pop it on your tray. Just trying to get make sure I get it in the right place so you can see it. It means that you get the same size cookies mm. or the same size cupcakes. And also you don't get as messy. Um, yeah. So I'm just going to do these cookies. And then they'll go in the oven for about eh, probably about 10 minutes. And then... I always struggle with I always struggle with cookies because I always end up overcooking them because they should probably stay quite soft, shouldn't they? They should. This is the thing. Now, cookies really should be crunchy on the outside and gooey on the inside. Okay, hey, you've eaten them all. <laughs> they're all them gone, all. or they're or they're in the cookies. So you'll have to or wait. Or they're to in the cookies. Them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So I'm just going to, because they spread quite a lot, so I'm only going to put four on there for now. Mm. I'm going to pop these in the oven on about 180 fan, and it'll probably take about, about eight to ten minutes, so I'm going to pop them in now. There we go, those are in, so in about eight minutes, hopefully they'll be ready to come out. But yeah, I just think cookies are such a perfect thing to start baking with. You know, if you're a bit nervous about baking and you think, oh, not very really good, then um, that's definitely one to start on for sure. Mm. Well, I know my my own daughter since we've been in um, in lockdown, she's you know she's done her own cook because she's here and she doesn't yeah. necessarily want to eat the same time as as we do. She's she has really done quite a lot of cooking herself. You know, whole you know whole meals, her own tea, her own lunch. Um, you know, she's a whiz with eggs. She leaves it all in a total mess, mind. But you know, <laughs> at least she's cooking. And I think, well, I don't think if we would have had, you know, this, if we hadn't have had this lockdown, I don't think she would have done any cooking. She would have just relied on coming home from work or whatever and relying on me to do it. So um, you know, it is it's good. And I, like you said, I think it is more trendy um, now for teenagers to be doing their own cooking. So yeah, um, definitely. Being self sufficient, there appears to be a crocodile in our. I saw our that pool. crocodile coming in. <laughs> Is that something from Blue Peter? Did you make yeah, that? Yeah, crocodile going to eat all our cookies. <laughs> that was Crocky, was it? Oh, Crocky. <laughs> um. <laughs> so yeah, it's been it's been a, a crazy time since Bake Off, but it's been it's been wonderful. It's um. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm really excited about the future as well. Oh, mm. I'll actually, you know, I've got my, I've got my, uh, my winner's plate here from the Christmas plate. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Let's have a look at that. There you go. My, my pride and joy. Oh, look at that. What's it made of? Is it like a... It's a, yeah, it's um oh, oh, I see. It's a proper cakes. Oh, yes. Proper cake stand, yes. Not that I ever put cakes on it, because I want people to see what's on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's my, that's my pride and joy, that one. <laughs> but, yeah, if anyone's got any questions for me, it doesn't have to be yeah. baking related, but it can be. Um, mm. You know, I'm happy to answer anything, really. I'll answer most things, to be honest with you, Julie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know. I'm sure people will pop some things in. Well, the thing is, a lot of people do watch this when it's not live as well, Bryony, because it goes on yeah, to YouTube as well. So, you know, um, there are uh, uh, there are lots of questions that could come in after or we could get asked about on email as well. Um, people cool. are commenting about your lovely cake stand. Do you know, it's one thing I don't possess as a cake stand. And I was going to do a cream tea for somebody um in lockdown i thought well that'd be quite nice we'll do a cream tea and then i don't have a cake stand you think oh i just have to put it on plates don't look quite the same it? well i've got many many cake stands julie so if you ever need to borrow one you let me know <laughs> i know it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not oh 
That's a good question. How do you rescue oh, we have a question. if it mm. curdles? Now, I, yes, this happens quite a lot. So one suggestion I would make is when you're making the cake batter, rather than doing all in one, I use the creaming method. So cream the butter and the sugar together. Then I would add half the eggs, mix it in, half the flour, mix it in. The rest of the eggs mix, the rest of the flour mix. I find if you do it that way, it doesn't curdle. But sometimes mm. if it's all in one, for some reason it curdles, I don't know. If you do get to the point where it curdles, add a little bit more flour and then beat it quite forcefully. So, you know, really give it a good whack. If you're using a, a stand mixer, put it up high. If you're using an electric whisk, again, nice and high. If you're using good old arm muscles, just give it a really good beating. And that should mm. bring it back. Um, but, yeah, try and, try and avoid it in terms of how you're prepping the cake. So half eggs, half flour, half eggs, half flour. Uh, but, yeah. That should work. Hopefully, Kat, that'll help. <laughs> and what else we had? Something. How do you make sure your experimenting child leaves the kitchen the way they found it? So do you sort of encourage the whole cooking experience includes the tidying up? Or do you risk them putting everything in the dishwasher and then they chip chip all your crockery, which normally happens in my house? <laughs> yeah, well, quite. I mean, Nora's quite still quite young. She's only five. But we do encourage her to tidy up and clean up and, you know, make sure everything's put where it should be. So, mm. you know, I think, you know, they're never kids are never too young to start learning that we're not going to do everything for them. No. Uh, no. In my opinion, but um, yeah, I mean, you know, if, if Nora's made a mess, she has to tidy it up. But if we're baking, yeah. you know, I'll do the bulk of the tidying up because that's not the fun part for her. Yeah. Mm. You want it to still be fun, you know. You don't want her to think, "Oh, we're going to bake." That means I've got to tidy up for twenty minutes. Mm. <laughs> mm. I know, um, I know. <laughs> you know, so I still want her to appreciate that there is there that is part of it. Mm. Um, mm. But yeah, I mean, it's you know, each to their own, really. So I think Hannah's asking about honeycomb. Not so, I think I may have made honeycomb baskets. Ooh, honeycomb. Yeah, only been yes. successful once. What are the tips for honey successful oh. honeycomb? You know what, honeycomb <laughs> is one of those things. Anything with sugar is so easy to go wrong and mm. burn. Like every time I make a caramel, I'd say 95% of the time I end up burning it. Even though I know it's coming, mm. I end up burning it because you want to get it to that perfect amber colour. Mm. But it can literally be three seconds and it's gone too mm. far and you also don't know until you've taken it off because it still carries on looking mm. but mm. I think practice for sure and um you know just when it starts to go that amber color take it off before it gets too dark um because with honeycomb as well you can really taste it if you've burnt the sugar mm. so yeah maybe go for like a paler amber than a darker amber just to make mm. sure that it's burnt. Yeah, I see. I've got an induction hob and it just sort of seems to be so hot. Uh, and because uh, I've just swapped over from having gas to an induction hot electric induction, but it does seem to be quicker and I'm forever like stuff's over boiling and I'm just sort of trying to get used to that really at the moment. So yeah, although you sort of think you know how to do it, but then you've only got to have a change of oven or hob or something and then it, you've got to start all over again. That was one of the hard things about baking in the tent is that it was obviously not not your oven. You know, you no. get used to your mm. oven and your hob. And then I'd have to cook in, I mean, their ovens were a lot nicer than mine. <laughs> so, you know, it was it was trying to judge what, mm. you know, what changes you need to make. But also the induction, they had induction hobs and we've got gas. And the mm. stress, just trying to turn the blimmin' thing on. I know, I know. <laughs> and you're in a rush, you're like, come on! And then, like you say, you put it on, you don't know what number to put it on, and you put it on mm. nine and burn it, or you put it on two and it wouldn't go fast yeah. enough. I know. Yeah, definitely a learning curve on that one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> have you have you changed any of your appliances since being on Bake Off? Has Actually, it made yeah. you think, oh, I'm going to get a different whatever I'm going to get? <laughs> yeah, you know what? Very, very lucky. I um, We used to have um, just sort of like quite an average oven. Um, it came with the house because we bought the mm -hmm. house when it was new 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And after Bake Off, I realised I was baking most days. <laughs> So my lovely Nan said, um, she was like, I think I think it'd be really good if you got a, a nap oven. That's what we use. To <laughs> yeah. And I said, oh, no, don't worry, you know, I don't need, she's like, no, no, I'd like to buy you a nap oven. So God love her. She, unfortunately, she passed away in November. Mm. Um, she's one of the loveliest ladies in the world. And uh, yeah, she very kindly bought bought us a nap oven. So yeah, oh. it's, um, it's my pride and joy. That and my KitchenAid. I couldn't be mm. without it. <laughs> mm. 
Yeah. Is there anything else? So would you say, think, like, I, I wouldn't be without a whisk, really. I'm not say, talking an expensive whisk, you know, just a ham whisk, because they're like about £10 in Sainsbury's, aren't they? But I just yeah. don't think you can well, really be without. Like that. Yeah, electric, yeah, yeah. You just I can't be without them, can you? I mean, yeah, I think if there's if there's one you know, and, things mm. you can get, you know, because not everyone can get a stand mixer. Um, you know, I bought I bought my KitchenAid back in 2013, 14, and it's still going strong. You know, I mean, it mm. can take a, a good <laughs> good beating. Um, mm. But that that was you know that was an investment for me because I just thought you know I started baking, but I knew I was going to carry it on. So mm. you know, but if you're if you're just starting out, a hand whisk is perfect. Mm. You know, like you say, you can get them in Sainsbury's for a ten. I think I got this one on on Amazon for twenty quid, and it's quite, mm. a, you know, quite yeah, it looks like quite a nice one. That one. Yeah. It's nice. yeah, Russell Hops, but it's it's not like super expensive, but it's just got a little bit more um, power to it, which mm. you need. And if you haven't got a lot of space in your kitchen, I mean, things like yeah. hand mixers, and you know, they they can be quite big things, can't they? That it's a yeah. hassle to get out, hassle to clean. You know that sort of thing is uh, is really really quick and easy, and kids can use them, can't they? Without exactly, it being too complicated. Yeah. Exactly, and I just think that's that's definitely one sort of thing. That and an ice cream scoop. Oh yeah, yeah. You're I sorted. did buy, I did get a new ice cream scoop when when we had our kitchen new new kitchen. You know, you think right, that's it. I'm gonna get rid of all my old um, utensils, all the stuff. Nothing matches, does it? I literally got things are getting rusty, like your ice yeah. cream. Scoop. <laughs> so yeah we got all new stuff it's quite nice really but, and then oh, i haven't been able to have anybody round since oh, oh, oh i know i know it's so rubbish mm, i, I miss people so people. much i'm so sociable i love talking to mm, people I know, so, um, I know so have you have you still done anything you've had to go along to then have you just sort of been, still been in studios and stuff or have you had to do all of it online have you been able to go in studios and sort of be with done. people but just distancing yeah, so when we filmed Ains with Ainsley Harriet a few weeks ago, that was just sort of COVID secure. So it's still in the mm. studio, but there's, you know, there's someone on set whose job it is entirely to make sure everyone's being COVID safe. Mm. Um, so it all felt very, very secure. Uh, mm. And we're filming with Food Unwrapped. I haven't done loads, but I've done a bit. Um, and again, it's all just, you know, outside where possible, uh, mm. all very COVID safe. Mm. Um you know, we all travel separately and, you know, it's, you know, the keeping the distance and the hand sanitising and the, you know, it's, it's all very, I feel very protected yeah. um, when I'm doing stuff like that because, you know, people, they do take it really seriously. Mm. So, yeah, and then I've been doing lots of stuff from home as well. It's kind of been a bit of a mix, but I think hopefully things will start picking up again now yeah. with, the, mm. with the TV stuff, with filming the Food Unwrapped because, you know, obviously as the, the vaccine rollout carries on mm. and, and you know the numbers come down hopefully obviously i'm mm. saying this all touch wood fingers crossed yeah mm. um then you know we might actually be able to start getting some normality she says mm. well i think we i think you know that when a lot of our community well of a lot of our community groups and things that you know where people where people in somerset are used to access and they're used to getting out and about and that was what was good for their mental health and of course without being able to go to anything, it's quite difficult. And not everybody's got online facilities. So it's, you know, they are quite isolated. So I think we've just got to find a way of being able to be COVID safe and, you know, get people to try and get out and about again, even if it's smaller groups and, um, you know, that sort of thing. But people just want to be back out, don't they? Doing I know, stuff. that's it. Just, you know, just seeing one other person not having to exercise or go for a walk, you know, I, mm -hmm. don't, I don't care, I'll, you know, I'll sit out in the freezing cold yeah, <laughs> on, a, yeah. You know, on a picnic blanket just to have a chat with my friend you know and catch up um, yeah that's what I did yesterday for my sister's 50th it was like oh. a cake a cake from the cake shop and <laughs> sit outside you know and, and hand the present over yeah but you just can't do anything you know proper celebration know. but it's mm. uh, you know we will we will we will celebrate and we will enjoy mm. it it's just you know, it was, you know, when, when my nan passed away in November, we couldn't have, I mean, yeah, celebrate all your life. And, yeah. you know, we yeah. could only have 15 people at the funeral. And yeah. and it was it's it was really fair. sad that, that yeah. it had to be like that. So I think, you know, there's so many things, you know, it was my sister-in-law's birthday on Sunday. It was her 30th. Yeah. Um, we're hopefully moving house in a few weeks, uh, you know, a few months. And it's like yeah. all these things we want to celebrate, I just think, over the summer and yeah. <laughs> heading into the new year, it's just going to be... 
lots of mm. lots of celebrations and happy times. I think it will be. I think it will be. We just got to get it right, haven't we? The right mix of um, being safe and uh... absolutely. Yeah, that's that's the thing. It's right. I think the kids are ready. Yeah, Give me two seconds. seconds. Yeah, we're all, if we're all sensible, carry on, Brian. If we're all sensible, I think we can all try and get to some sort of normality, can't we? So um, hopefully, everybody out there can be meeting up with people um, outside in safely safe manner or trying to get people back in houses being able to meet with uh, people even if it's only close family for now all right they've gone my cookies have gone mental and i think the reason they're being in is that i didn't chill them beforehand and they've all they've all met in the oven and made friends ah well that's what mine do but um, i just have a slab when i make but them. literally this, this this these cookies are going to be the same size as nora's head so <laughs> They look lovely. Oh, well, they'll taste really. If only we can smell them as well. Yeah, I know, I know. They'll be, they'll taste delicious, but they're absolutely huge. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, those, those cookies, actually, the, the version that I made on my Instagram was, um, were vegan and they were lovely. Also, you know, if you're dairy free, not if you're just, you know, not just vegan, but they came out so beautifully and tasted delicious. So, if anyone out there is dairy free and wants to try a really good cookie recipe, you look on my Instagram. It's on um, under the live um, with Joseph Elliott, a, oh, okay. aka Cook from Swashbuckle. Um, so I think Hannah can put the Instagram link up. Can you put the Instagram link up? Otherwise, I will type it in after. Um, and you've obviously got your Twitter account as well. I don't know whether yeah. a lot of us are on Twitter. I find it all. Quite yeah, difficult. I mean, I'm on it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on it for being for the sake of being on it, and I, you know, I do, okay. it can be really good. It can be really good, but sometimes it can be a bit vicious. Yeah, I know. It's all the tagging and all those sort of things. Yeah. I'm, I'm just like, oh no, it's too confusing. I've got enough to get my head around Facebook and Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> so lower calorie um, baking then. So those cookies, if that was a vegan or dairy free one, presumably they would just have slightly less calories then if it didn't have your eggs and or is it you not think you've, got so. to add other... you've got to add other mm. bits so they that you know mm. it would be dairy free spread which is slightly lower fat mm. but you know it's still mm. got the sugar in and the the um, biscoff spread and things like that so yeah you know. yeah, yeah. <laughs> i haven't used that biscoff spread because that's like those oh. little biscuits isn't it i you know those little tiny biscuits you get with your your tea and things yeah and coffee and oh lovely I mean, we have up the Nutella cheesecakes and yeah, Nutella cheesecakes and all of those sort of things. Absolutely lovely. Yeah, Biscoff spread is is dreamy. Mm. So, excuse me, being sick. Has Biscoff spread got any nuts in it? No, and it's I uh, don't think no, no, it doesn't. And it's vegan Biscoff spread as well. Oh, so it's dairy okay. free. Oh. Um, but yeah, you can get it in most supermarkets now, um, and it mm. really is stupidly delicious. I know, I know. I just, I'm just thinking about dipping your finger in and eat, eating it out of the jar. <laughs> and they do a cr they do a crunchy one now as well, like as in like it's got biscuit oh. bits in it. Oh my goodness, it's just not good, no. is it? I mean, I, I suppose much. lockdown really. I've probably just eaten more chocolate than I ever have. I have to say, <laughs> I don't know why. You're not alone there, Julie. You're not alone. I just keep buying bars of it on the like the weekly food shop. I bought five bars of chocolate. And uh, oh, since the weekend, and I've sort of had a bar every night. <laughs> it's instead of drinking wine. wine. It's instead of drinking alcohol, I suppose. It's got to be a good thing in some way. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> oh, fair. So um, tell us a bit more about Bake Off then. Is it all quite rehearsed or is everybody quite natural and, you know, most of it gets aired and it's not all cut out and things? Yeah, no, it's, no nothing's rehearsed. Um, it's, it's all very true to what happens, I think, in the tent, in my opinion. Um, mm. You know, there's the odd bit here, which they kind of, you know, edit together to make it look a little bit more dramatic. But it's a TV mm. show. It's, that's always going to happen. Mm. Um, but no, they're very, you know, they're very true to to what actually happens. Um, and yeah, I, it was just a really positive experience. They really looked after us. They were, you know, they made sure that our well-being was their priority. They, you know, it was all it was all very wholesome, which is what the show projects, I think. Mm. And 
and it was it was really nice to know that that actually is case behind the scenes too um because i've always been a fan of the show i've watched mm. it you know, for years before i was on it so mm. to actually get there and go in the tent and it would be such a wonderful experience i mean it was the most stressful thing i've ever done mm. and poor hollywood is terrifying but it <laughs> i'd still do it again in a heartbeat because it was mm. brilliant <laughs> mm. It always seems like it's nice weather when they're filming. Yeah. But you don't obviously it's filmed before it's um it's aired, isn't it? I don't know how many months in advance or whatever they do it, but um it, it always just seems like it's nice weather. Yeah, they film they film sort of end of April to beginning of July. Mm. And it's mad how um how sunny it is. It just seems to be like as soon as they put the tent up and start filming, mm. there's a heat wave or Mm, mm. or something but uh, yeah I mean it's bonkers but it, in that tent it's even hotter than you'd think mm. because there's no air conditioning often they can't have the sides up because of the, a little bit but it's okay and um, they can't have you know the sides up because of of the lights and things like that so mm. you know it gets really hot in that tent yeah with all the yeah. ovens going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. but there's Sorry, quite a lot of, oh is she what's she saying she's just being a hairdresser Oh, <laughs> does she want to be a hairdresser? This uh, no, she wants she wants to be a vet. Oh, does Thank she? You. Yeah, she wants oh. to be a teacher vet. So she wants to teach people how to be a vet. But we're just trying. Oh. We're trying to explain to her that she needs to be a vet before she can do that. Vet first. Yeah, yeah. No, I won't do that bit. I'll just go straight into that. <laughs> oh, on, oh, she says on the weekend she's going to teach people how to be a vet. What are you going to do in the week? Oh, she's. <laughs> She's going to do that as well in the week. Um, sorry, Julie. What? Hang on. So, what? has she got? Has she got some animals? Has she got any animals to look after there? Then, Bryony. We've got, got Archie, pets? our dog. Yeah, we've got mm -hmm. lovely Archie. Archie, come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. We do okay. like to see everybody's dogs on our talking cafes. I know. Yeah. The dogs well, he's, he is all pretty cool. Archie, come here. <laughs> Good boy. Here he is. Oh, this is what Archie. sort of breed? Is, what breed is he? He's a cockapoo, but you wouldn't think it. Oh, you know, he looks quite cocker spaniel -y. Oh, yeah, he looks like his mum, who was the cocker, but he's very oh. lovely, aren't you? Lovely boy. So we got him in the November, mm. and then found out we were pregnant with Nora in the December. So. Oh, <laughs> oh dear. Well, at least yeah. he was still quite young, so he sort of was almost bought up. I think nothing worse than having like a five or six year old dog and then you have a child. They're going to be really put out, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, I mean, he was, yeah, they've grown up together, which is lovely because they're like little mm. best friends. Which is yeah. Nice. So, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, and he's a very good boy most of the time. Although the other day, someone very kindly sent me some brownies in the post. You know, you can mm. get these kind of like brownies to order. And Archie ate the lot. Oh no! Well, we had to take him to the, take him to the yeah, we, yeah, they were chocolate brownies, so we had to go to the vet, and he had to have his stomach pumped. So those lovely oh. free brownies that someone sent me cost, ended up costing quite a lot. Oh dear! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they can do that. I know our our dog. Um, somebody had bought round a box of Maltesers or something or other, and was it Maltesers or the little truffle ones? And uh, yeah, he managed to undo the box very carefully, take them out, and uh, eat them. Without disturbing oh. the box. Oh, that's very clever. I know, Archie, <laughs> yeah, just Archie, Archie tore the brownie box to shreds. So. <laughs> oh, no. So it's very obvious that it happened then. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, is there anything else you want to tell us about, Bryony? Anything else that you're doing that you'd want um, viewers to, uh, to to find out about? Or, so you know, the main the... thing is, is this teaching course that I've done, so mm. Baking with Kids. It'd be great if you guys could check it out and you can down, mm. download the, um, the free pizza making lesson. Mm. And uh, check me out on Celebrity Mastermind in a few weeks' time. I think it's going to be a week Saturday. Oh, yes, yeah, so I'll just make March. a note of that. And um, and then yeah, just just keep an eye out for the new series of Food Unwrapped, which they keep telling me that is going to be on, and then they keep putting it back. So at some yeah. point, it'll be on. <laughs> so, are, are you got any plans of going sort of overseas at all with any of this? I know obviously no one can at the moment, but um, I know. Yeah, that well, that's normally with Food Unwrapped, they do some lovely sort of stories. They go 
you know, as far away as China, Thailand, South America. Mm. So I was hoping I'd be I'd be doing some sort of exciting long haul thing. But I yeah. made it over to Dublin. That was exciting. Mm. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, at some point, hopefully. But who knows? Oh, it's very exciting anyway, Bryony. Well, thank you so much for all your time today. I know you're, you're a busy lady and obviously <laughs> you've still got to get a bit more schooling in till the end of the week. <laughs> <laughs> two more days oh yeah but thank you thank so you much for having me it, it, yeah it's really brightened up everybody's day i'm sure to try and have some you know fun things and i'm sure we're all going to be on your uh, your website on the weekend looking up all your lovely recipes and indulging ourselves in lots of cakes and uh, wow and nice. it's lovely to talk to you julie yeah, it was lovely. Well, we'll leave you to it. And I hope Nora isn't too tired for the rest of your day. And um fine. <laughs> oh, bless her. All right, Lots then. We'll take care. Yeah, thank you bye. so much. Yeah, bye, everybody. Bye. bye. bye.